Hello there, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect your DPR farm from start to finish, just simply by step by step instructions and how to connect your DPR device. And all the products that I use will be in the description below and you can check it out and see what you think. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. As well as any corrections that I made a mistake on. I'm not a professional at all, so just trying my best. There's also timestamps below in the description to help you pause or skip any parts that you already may know. And here's my modem router combo with an optional fan on top it does get warm helps cool down the device i do use high amount of data stay till the end of the video to find out how much data i use and other bonus content as well here's the back of the modem router as you can see all four ethernet ports are being used and yes after i stopped recording i did give some more clearance from the wall to the connections so i'm using currently fiber uh, it uses five gigahertz speed more info on my modem router combo more details in my modem combo router it does use two parts modem and a router in combination in one product and you can see the back and how it looks like some of you may have this some of you may not but this is provided by my isp my internet service provider and here is my router i currently have multiple routers like these gigabit router which is nice especially if you want to get access to wi-fi outdoors i currently have two one on each side of my home to get access even on the, in the back yard covered in an enclosed case and also a modem some of you may have this as well a modem by a device by itself and this is how it looks like all of different steps going forward for those who have this uh, modem and a router and separate of course it may, it may be a different manufacturer but similar design and similar name so now we're going to talk about ethernet cable different categories from cat 5 cat 6 7 and 8 and the benefits of always going a little bit more than your current speed because you want to future proof your ethernet cable for the long term future and i always go a bit higher just in case so we're gonna have to purchase more ethernet cables because it's always better to plan ahead years in advance since so here's my cat 8 that i currently have it works with all devices and compatible no need to worry about buying more ethernet cables in the future here's more detailed on cat 6a and 6 as well as 7 and 8 and the data transmission speed per 100 meters most likely won't be that long but yeah there it is I'll also talk about network switches. All the ones shown on the right hand side are the ones that I'm currently using. From top to bottom, a 16 port gigabit ethernet network switch. If you're using 15 deeper device or less than that, that's the one you need. Remember, I originally got 10 picos, but eventually got two extra picos. So plan accordingly. Feature proofing, middle one is a 10 port gigabit up to 10 gigahertz speed ethernet switch. If you have nine, deeper devices or less that one is the great one option as well the third is five port gigabit switch for four deeper devices or less nice and compact with a good metal body design also the one in the middle of 10 port switch is up to 10 gigabit speed so you may not need this but if you have two and a half five gigahertz or even 10 gigahertz speed then that's the one you need i just use it to help out spread out my internet across my home i'll start from the source of internet connectivity from inside the home which is my modem router combo i do remember when i was looking to purchase a fan i learned at the product review that if somehow your modem router or modem gets burned out by overheating, you will be responsible to pay out of pocket for another new one from your ISP, your internet service provider. So to prevent this from ever happening, I got this little fan. Uh, this fan is powered by USB, so you have the option to mount or connect it through your modem router. I also purchased separately clear rubber bumper pads, transparent rubber material, which just helps it cool off my modem router combo. This is how my modem router combo looks like without any cable connections. And here's a detailed layout and how my connections are in the back of my modem combo router. This is for a combo configuration. So I'll start where I receive my internet from the modem router combo, modem router combo. And then from there, the ethernet cable goes through the side of the wall, goes above the wall side of the window, above the window, strapped, and then goes outside. The distance of your ethernet cable will depend on your location of your farm. From the outside, we see the, the four ethernet cables going to their destinations, three black ethernet cables and one white ethernet cable. I did have to drill one inch diameter hole. I did this because I planned ahead knowing I would one day be a crypto farmer so all four ethernet cables may fit. Keep in mind better to have a bigger hole in case if in the future you will run a future wi-fi router for the outdoors like in the backyard or for future crypto miners. The one ethernet cable that's for the farm is the white one. Also properly seal it with silicone to prevent bugs and moisture from entering the home. Now we follow the white ethernet cable. The cable is properly strapped to prevent sagging. The length of this ethernet cable is 75 feet long. Depending on your farm's location, the distance may vary. 
Here we see two black ethernet cables entering the structure, which were painted white to blend better with the wall. Notice how it has one inch silicone cover, but needs to be sealed with some silicone to prevent bugs and moisture from entering. That'll be done soon. Let's continue and on following the ethernet cable. Here we see extra length or slack of, ca of cable because it's always better to be longer than not so long or too short. So for this purpose, always add five to 10 feet extra of cabling to prevent a short cable run from a short cable from reaching your farm. I forgot to strap the excess length, but I'll do that soon as I get some Velcro tape. Here we see the white cable entering the structure with one inch silicone cover grommet, but it needs to be sealed with silic white silicone to prevent bugs and moisture from entering the structure. From the inside, we see the white Ethernet cable and GPS cable, another crypto miner you might heard about, Weather XM. On the right side, it needs to be covered up with some quick dry wall patch paste or mud, which I believe it's called, soon to be done. The benefits of a flat Ethernet cable allows for a cleaner and safer installation. Easily and seamlessly make the cable run along walls, edges, and corners. Goes through power strips nice and flat against the bamboo rack. As we follow the flat white Ethernet cable, also going through other crypto miners, as you can see. I do mine pre at home. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. We're following the path of the white ethernet cable to the switch. I did connect it to port one, which is the first ethernet port in the network switch. Underneath the mining farm is ethernet cables. The green blinking LED indicates one gigahertz connection. After you connect your ethernet cable from your modem router or modem, your switch would look like this. Feel free to pause the video so I may give you ideas on, on how you might want to set up your DPR mining farm. This is an overview of my installation before I added the picos, just initial setup for my switch and proper connections. It took me a couple of months to finalize my setup to once I acquired my picos at a discount to assembling my farm to having them running online 24 seven. If using a Pico for your farm, here are the proper connections you need to know before connecting your Pico. Top and bottom are for the power adapter or Wi-Fi adapter port. The Wi-Fi adapter comes with your Pico device. The right or left side are for the USB type C ethernet cable, which is supplied to you when you order a Pico. You'll be needing only one of supplied USB type C ethernet cables. Another Pico setup option is this. For the farm, it's going to be mode two. That's how my farm is currently running. This is exactly how my farm is running for my pico setup the only difference is that it has a network switch into it so it's not exactly like this i'll show an illustration and how my farm is set up and other methods as well in this illustration this is exactly how my farm is running for my pico setup which includes the modem router combo then the switch then connected ethernet cable to the pico with an optional fan included which is my recommendation that you will need a fan to prevent from the pico from overloading and overheating. And yeah, if this video is being helpful, feel free to like this video. Another configuration is your pico setup with a modem and a router separate. It'll be two pieces. So first is the modem, then you have an ethernet cable going through them from the modem to your router. And your connection point for your farm will be the router on the back hold on the LAN 1, then Ethernet cable from your router from LAN 1 to your network switch, depending on the size of it. I would normally like to put on the first one, so that would be the first one. First port on your network switch. The port number will be number one. Another configuration would be a modem with two ports. I've seen some modems that they have two ports on the back, so just connect it from your second port from your modem, which is number two, then to your router, then another Ethernet cable from your router to your network switch. Our ethernet cable will be in port one number one then from your network switch ethernet cable that's provided to you when you purchase a pico connect it to your pico as well as with a fan the next configuration will be the mini se setup with a modem router combo so in combination modem and a router connected to ethernet cable to your network switch if network switch using a cable to your mini se provided when you purchase a mini se keep in mind the mini se does not include a wi-fi adapter that is purchased separately keep in mind when you purchase the se and also most likely you want a fan because the minis do get hot but i'm not quite sure about the se but i'm just better to be sure have a fan included for the next configuration it would be for a modem and a router pretty much the same steps as before for the pico in this configuration for a modem and a router connected to your network switch then ethernet cable provided by the deeper product as a mini se but does not include a wi-fi adapter that is purchased separately and also preferably you would want to have a fan recommended but not required and for the next configuration the mini mini router combo modem router combo ethernet cable to your network 
network switch, uh, ethernet cable to your mini, which does include your Wi-Fi adapter. You most likely you will have a fan for this because I know I need a fan for my minis. So if you do have a mini farm, you will need fans for sure because they do get hot. I've seen some YouTubers that are 64 degrees Celsius, which is crazy. Crack some eggs on that. So yeah. Another configuration for your mini setup for the modem and a router. So you connect the ethernet cable that's already connected to your modem to your router and from your router, which will be LAN 1. Ethernet cable connect to your router to your network switch. First port will be number one. Then from your network switch, ethernet cable to your mini. Ethernet cable that's provided from to your from your mini to network switch. Those two connected together with adapter with the mini Wi-Fi adapter. And yes, you will need a fan for sure because they will get hot and you want to prevent it from overheating. Once your deeper device is connected and powered on, go to your mobile phone or laptop, go to settings on your Wi-Fi. You'll look for deeper network XXX, which will be the numbers. Wait for it to show. It may take some time, but be patient. For this example, I'll pick Pico 1 since I already have mine set up. Once you click on your deeper device Wi-Fi name, which should be deeper network and four numbers, go to your internet web browser on your mobile device and put 34.34.34.34. Your screen will show and accept the terms and conditions when of using your deeper device, if it's the first time setting it up. Once you accept it by checking the box, now you will need to log in to the first time to your deeper device. Username will be admin and password will be admin. I'll switch to my mini screen so you get a better view of my screen as I, I go along. Once logged into AdamOS, first step is to change your default password. If you haven't done so already, go to administration on the left side of the screen. Then where it says password, go there. Input your default password, which is admin, and change it to a secure password of your choice. Make sure to remember and or write it down. Keep your summer safe in the rare case that you do forget. Keep in mind that you will be repeating this process for each deeper device that you have in your farm. Then press OK. Once you have set up your new password, next step is to change your deeper device Wi-Fi name. If you choose to do so, I changed mine because having multiple deeper devices helps me keep track of each deeper device in my farm in numerical order for organization and for troubleshooting purposes. Purposes. It helps me to be organized, especially in the crypto mining farm. Once connected, you go to the left hand side, log in to your deeper device, and then you go to your left hand side, in the top corner or left hand side, where it says Wi Fi. Click on Wi Fi, and that's how your Wi Fi should look like. That's how my Pico is currently connected. Modem router, Ethernet cable to my switch, and Deeper Connect, since the Deeper Connect has Wi Fi adapter. It broadcasts a Wi-Fi signal to my devices that it's currently connected to. That's how it should look like. You should have internet in your Pico. If you have troubleshooting questions, feel free to ask them with the timestamp on the step that you're in. Also, feel free to join my Discord. Link in the description. Help you solve your problem that you may be having from your deeper device or Pico, whichever device you're doing. Yeah. So now that you have connected your deeper device for your farm, if you haven't staked or saved your private keys. I have a link in the description on how to stake your deeper device and stake DPR. Link in the description for that video. Now this is the bonus content for staying this long in the video. So I use AT&T. I use AT&T Fiber which is very good. Luckily my home, my area location has fiber in my location. So I currently used about 1300 total. I can see the graph here. I have unlimited which is great especially if you're mining Keep in mind, I also use Honeygain as well as other passive crypto income streams. It's also included in, in this. If you'd like to know more about Honeygain, check out my video in the description below and see what you think. Maybe if you haven't heard of Honeygain and other bandwidth sharing projects, check it out in the link in the description. And yeah, that's what I used for the month. And it's not that bad since I have unlimited. I don't mind with the amount of data being used. So the total used 805 gigabytes used which downloaded and uploaded it was 541 gigabytes in total 1300 so 1346 gigabytes in total for that month for february it's only 28 days so it'll probably be more a little bit more since it was 28 days in february so the second month of the year and that's my bonus footage for you to know and be aware that uh, depending on your cap if you have a cap in your internet Make sure you use your miner's limit. And there you go. So here's the overview of my mining farm. Excuse my 16 port gigabit switch and the farm at all. And there it is with my six fans cooling my Picos as well as my mini PC and my Raspberry Pi, which is currently having. I have two Raspberry Pis and the one of them runs pre. So I'm running pre in my farm as well. Other crypto projects, stay tuned for that. Join my membership. I explain it more in detail 
in the total in all the cryptos projects that I mine in my farm besides DPR. Hope my video helped in letting you know how to properly wire up your farm. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends and family, including your neighbors, about DPR, Web3 infrastructure for the users, by the users, for the users. Catch you in the next one.